apart from the other sections, is dedicated recycling section to the women, the older women. They patiently separate the waste by colors. Then the recycling machine can deal with them in batches. One way in showing gratitude to BOI, apart from utilizing the facility efficiently, Rumbo Sachs has attached the MD to their work. <laughs> the state government is happy with the actions of BOI, so it's time to make the bond tighter. But first, Sokutu makes our observations. Because if you read the history books, all of the trans uh, Atlantic, uh, the Trans Sahara trade, when you talk of Timbuktu, Kano was always there. And we know about also the Kano entrepreneurs. The richest man in Africa is from Kano. And um, you, you, you have a lot to be proud of in your state, but you have a, to whom much is given, much is expected. When I used to come to Kano in the 80s, I used to visit some tanneries. I used to go around with pride to see all kinds of things that were done, mostly by Nigerians. Here, I don't see too many of them anymore. Uh, it's, it's, it's gone. I see a lot of marabond factories as I drove past. I was a bit unhappy. I hear that it was worse before now. I, I can't imagine that it could happen to a place like Kano. So the governor has challenged everyone. The signing today should be just the beginning. We should see more dangotes coming out of here. Because you have the capacity to do it. And with the governor that's encouraging you to do it. This encouragement is documented in a memorandum of understanding between the Bank of Industry and Kano State Government and is sealed with a two billion naira check, one billion naira from the bank and the other from the state. The governor makes it clear that this step is deliberate and based on experience. Our plan is to make sure that in the next two years or so, we are able to make Kano to be the modern city that it deserves. And I'm sure this MOU that we have signed, uh, of course, will be a action because we here we call you an action lady. I believe in the next one month or two, these two billion naira will start going into the hands of entrepreneurs uh, in Kano State. Paperwork done with the real work is making the two billion naira work in the state through the people and for the development of the economy. Members of staff of the Bank of Industry in the Northwest Zone must now swing into action as much more has been given to them. One is very glad to see and to be part of this historic uh, event in Kano State uh, because uh, this is a noble you know, scheme that has been introduced by Bank of Industry since 2007. In addition to the existing pool of funds which the bank has, and uh, the dispersal of industry will certainly come. And the benefit will also go beyond that. It will provide, you know, the needed uh, employment opportunities for the youth, as well as uh, creation of wealth for even the generality of the uh, Kano state as a whole. And uh, in, in, in general, even the, 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 the country as a whole. So I think it's a very noble cause. It's a good uh, development. We are very happy with it. We shall uh, uh, give our best professionally to support the state government towards all the empowerment program it has in the state. With this huge amount available to the state, the bank 
is going to be working with the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Cooperative and Tourism. So the Commissioner now tells us the game plan on how to affect the life of the people in Kano State with this money. We had some, you know, uh, uh, you know, reduction or no for some time, basically because of the security situation at that time. I think things are beginning to come back to normalcy. Uh, so we, we are giving thanks to Almighty Allah for at least uh, making our city to become safer than it used to be maybe a year ago or so. Uh, but Kano is still, as it is in terms of the center of commercial activities, still number one in Nigeria when you talk of because this is the only place where uh, things in Lagos will be produced and you come to Kano to sell it and take it back to Lagos. i give you an example of a product. They, <coughs> they, they produce more of Indomie in Lagos. And they sell it here and they take it back to Lagos. This is how, Kano, how the importance of Kano is in terms of commercial activity. And we are hope, you know, as you said, you know, dating back to many, many years, uh, not only to the cities or to the states around the northern Nigeria, but also <coughs> to other regional uh, cities or other, other regional uh, uh, states. If you take Niger, Chad, if you go as far as even North Africa, Libya and Co., they, they, they are all, you know, have one way or the other relating to Kano in terms of the way do the, the commercial activities are, are done here. So Kano is still, is. I'm sure he, he, you might be uh, uh, opportune or privy to uh, the recent report of the Renaissance Group on the economy of Nigeria. And, and, and if you look at that rating, Kano is still the second largest economy in Nigeria after Lagos. Even when we talk about this you know, commercial activities, it's more of trading. And we know that if you really want to um, grow the economy of a state, it has to do with the real sector, which is manufacturing, industrialization. So what are you doing to um, not just increase trading, but also increase um, activities in the real sector? of the state. We realize that, look, the engine room of any economy is the small-scale industries. You know, there are, you know, uh, uh, people who are not that uh, big or buoyant in terms of, you know, creating a bigger industry, but yet with little, they can be able to do a lot in terms of. So <clears throat> most of these institutions that we created are empowering people towards creating uh, this kind of industries. So if you look, if you look at it, for example, people who are into poultry, you know, we are teaching them, and them also giving them the facilities to be able to, 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 to manage that kind of business. Uh, uh, one other area that we're looking at is cluster development. You know, we have people who are doing, for example, rice. How do you cluster them and support them? Because some of them require uh, modern facilities in terms of the machines that they use, you know. And then some of them need a little bit of, you know, financing. Some of them uh, have difficulty in even knowing the sources of where they can go to get support. So one, one key thing that we did is to create structures that can support our people because we realize their deficiency in terms of capacity. And so we needed to create structures. And one of those structures that we created is cre creating the establishment of the Entrepreneurship Institute. If we go back a bit, uh, we'll, we'll see that even while industrializing the state, you need raw materials. And most of these raw materials come from agriculture. Uh, people from all over the country come to the north for heights and skin, for you know, the production of food. Now, are you also looking at uh, grooming the agricultural potential of the state? We are, and uh, <clears throat> one, one, one thing that uh, we are trying to do now in collaboration with uh, the Federal Ministry of uh, Trade and Investment, uh, or Industry Trade and Investment now, uh, is uh, to do one local government, one product, which is they call OLAP. So in every local government, we are trying to identify the product that they have comparative advantage and see what we can in supporting them. We are trying to support the whole value chain 
right from you know the issue of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, processing up to production up to you know uh, every level because you are talking of agriculture if we identify that look you have a more comparative advantage in uh, production of rice then we will encourage you in terms of the seedlings you require improve seedlings whether you require it. and then uh, all the facilities that you need to be supported so that there will be increase in uh, the production of the rice then <clears throat> to now processing that rice to packaging the rice and even to get in the market for the rice so it's a whole value chain that we're looking at so every local government within the 44 local governments we have now identified one product that they have comparative advantage and the next step which we are going into is <clears throat> trying to see what we can in supporting them so that they, they will be known for that and there will be you know improvement in that so <clears throat> that is one key thing that we're looking at and uh, there's a two billion naira partnership with the bank of industry where the state brings one billion naira and the bank of industry brings one billion naira. that's a huge amount of money now what are you hoping to achieve and uh, what confidence do you have to commit such a large amount of money to this partnership. You need more, more than that to sustain that empowerment. The key thing is, you know, sustainers of whatever we have done. There is a whole lot of things to be done. And what we have <clears throat> been able to do now is to get all these people that have been empowered to form cooperatives. Because it's easier for them to have every kind of support that they will require. So this is one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is the small-scale industrialists who are, have on their own been able to set up their businesses, either through their own source of funding, personal sources, or what kind of it. And what His Excellency wants to do is how do we encourage them so that we can push them? Because we know that when they increase their own capacity, there will be a reduction in the number of people which we have out there because what, what automatically it means they will need to require more people to work with them. So by so doing, we are now reducing. Remember, Kano is the most populated. We need to do so many things at the same time to be able to uh, uh, use this population as advantage to us. An official of the Bank of Industry um, some time ago said that even the money that has been set aside for use for people to access in the north is not really access, you know, because people have this fear of debts. They don't want to be labeled as being debtors. Now, how are you going to deal with this that even when the money is available, you know, people will come forward to access this fund? Uh, well, before I come to how I'm going to deal with that, let me just tell you that uh, I think uh, it's not that the people have fear in taking debts or taking loan. I think what is there is that most businesses are not even aware of how they can assess these funds. So lack of awareness, I think, is key. And this is what is, uh, you know, uh, happening even here. Uh, because... People don't even know how to package their proposals. And that is why I say one of the things that we tried to do when we came in, His Excellency Engineer Musa Kunkosu tried to establish or establish the entrepreneurship institute where we can teach people how they can formalize their businesses, how they can know how to modernize their businesses, how they can learn bookkeeping, which is difficult for them, how they can even do a bankable proposal, which is difficult for them. You know, a lot of people were used to a simple trading of, look, when I sell, whatever they pay me, I put it in my pocket. You know, no any uh, 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 structure on ground on, in terms of what comes in and what goes out. So at the end of the day, it's difficult for you even to assess the level of how you are progressing in the business you are doing. So uh, to me, it's not, I don't believe that is the issue of, you know, that 
appear that people are, have, have in taking loans. But they didn't even know how to even, where to even approach, how to do even the approach, which is the most difficult thing. So I think I will use this uh, uh, avenue or this medium in, in terms of calling of, especially Bank of Industry, that they have to help support in terms of doing a lot of awareness campaign, sensitization campaign, workshops, where people can, you know, be well oriented. You know, they can, you know, they will now have the awareness and knowledge of what to do and how to do it and where to go and how to package whatever is required of them. So. This episode took us to the north. Who knows where the Bank of Industry is taking us to next? But the most important thing is that Nigeria will be industrialized. That's the aim of the Bank of Industry. And our aim here is to bring you the story. So if you miss any other stories, please go to YouTube and you can get it. Or if you have comments, you have questions, or you want to reach the Bank of Industry, please get in touch with us on any of our platforms and you'll be glad you did. Until next time on VOI Weekly, I'm Ini Thompson.